So welcome to day 61 of Through the Bible in One Year. We're literally passing um, pretty much a two month mark of our Through the Bible study in one year. In today's Bible study video, we're going to be covering Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 9, and Deuteronomy chapter 10. And Moses is going to draw out another key example basically um, in today's Bible study video. As we continue through the book of Deuteronomy, um, he's continuing to draw out key um parts of history from the, from the Israelites past just to highlight to them look these are the things you shouldn't be doing and these are the things you should remember when you enter the, the land that the Lord has actually promised you so let's continue going um, and jump straight in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 1 all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. So the Lord's highlighting here that the forty years were in, for, in one um, sense to humble the Israelites and to know whether or not they actually believed in him. Because the forty years was judgment on the older nation basically. And at the same time, the Lord can actually prove the younger generation that will enter the promised land and see, do you actually believe the Lord or are you um, just literally living in unbelief? And that's really important here, okay? Verse 3, And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, okay? So that's the manna from heaven that the Lord used to bring down every day. It came twice on the sixth day of the week. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only but by every that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live it's a famous piece of text that Jesus quotes when he's being tempted by Satan basically again okay, it's interesting that the Lord's what the Lord's saying here okay I gave you manna from heaven every single day pretty much and two times on the sixth day uh, not on the seventh so you remember that look it's not the bread that I'm giving you that you live by, but it's by every word that comes out from God, basically, okay? Four, thy raiment, so your clothes, wax not old upon thee. Neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. So their clothes and their shoes were preserved for 40 years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart. So the Lord's saying, think about this as well, really deeply, that as a man chasteneth, his son, the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Okay, so as a parent, okay, is supposed to correct their children basically with um, necessary discipline. The Lord saying here, yeah, I disciplined you with the necessary discipline as well. Verse six. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in His ways and to fear Him, for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills excuse me a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of oil olive and honey a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness so there's going to be abundance okay thou shalt not lack any in it a land whose stones iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass okay when thou hast eaten and art full then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Notice that. Verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, and art full, okay, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he giveth, which he, which he hath given thee. Let's keep going. Verse 11. Beware that thou forgettest not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I commanded this day. Okay. Why? Let's see. Twelve. Lest thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and dwelt, and thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage who led thee through the, the, that great and terrible wilderness, fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, 
who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of hand have gotten me this wealth. So Lord's highlighting here, we I took you through all of these things that you knew, okay. You didn't ever get to the conclusion that look, it was me, it was by my hand, okay. Um that these things happen it's important because if um, think about your life today and think about where you currently are okay um do you believe you are exactly where you're supposed to be do you believe you're um living in complete um satisfaction not lacking okay um why okay um this isn't applicable to every situation okay but in some situations it's because the Lord knows that you'll be lifted up in pride. You won't reverence him. Um, you, you say that it's your own work. And ultimately, you get to a point where you reject the Lord. Okay. So from that standpoint, you need to understand that. You need to continue. So I, I like to say to a lot of people all the time, okay, always try and give thanks to everything. Okay. Um, never try and say, look, I'm doing this for myself. Okay. Um, it's easy to get carried away. Oh, but I work a job and I make money and all these kind of things. Um, where does the energy to get up every day come from? Okay. Where does the grace to wake, to go to sleep and wake up in the morning actually come from? It's because God's granting you another day on the earth. Okay. Um, God's giving you energy. Okay. Um, God's not, um, um, allowing different things to affect you mentally or physically to stop you okay so in all things continue to give god the glory and give god the thanks okay and he'll he'll see that and reverence you for it okay 18 but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for he that giveth thee power to get wealth who he gives you the power to get wealth okay that he may why that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as this day and it shall be if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods, what's going to happen? And serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that ye shall utterly, that ye shall surely perish. Okay. So if you get lifted up, if you go and serve other gods or try and say, look, this is me, you will utterly perish. That the Lord is saying, I testify against you this day. 20. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish. Because you will not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Okay. Hear, O Israel, chapter 9, thou to pass over Jordan this day to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven. Okay, notice that. Okay, we're getting that allusion to the land they're repossessing from the giants. Okay, let's keep going. A people great and tall, the children of the Anakims. Okay whom thou knowest and thou hast heard who can stand before the children of Anak and it makes sense doesn't it okay if everybody else is just I guess normal size we call it and you've got these giants okay dwelling in these particular lands the saying amongst the people is going to be who can dwell who can who can do anything to them okay that's the Lord's highlighting that saying this is the talk of this of the town okay Look what it says, understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God, he which goeth over before thee, a consuming fire, he shall destroy them. And he shall bring them down before thy face, so shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord hath said unto thee. Speak not thou in thine heart after that the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, saying, for my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. Notice, okay. It's not because of their righteousness the Lord's bringing them in. Okay? We've read constantly about their unrighteousness. Okay, But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. And that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand therefore that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou a stiff necked people. Remember, forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness, from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until you came unto this place, 
you have been you have been rebellious against the Lord, and it's interesting because think about your own particular life. Okay, um, how much bad stuff do we do? Okay, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, whether it's consciously or unconsciously. Okay, um, but the Lord still blesses you in so many different ways. Okay, and that's what the Lord needs you to understand. That's what He needed these people here to understand that. You are unrighteous, and if I dealt with you, okay, in what was just to do with you, you'd be wiped out, okay. But I'm going to bless you, okay, in the same way as sinners, okay. God is still able to save us, okay, through the necessary propitiation, which is accepting Jesus Christ as our perfect offering for sin, okay. It's not any works that we can do so we can boast ourselves and say, oh, okay. I'm holier than now, I'm perfect, X, Y, Z, okay. Um, if the Lord had actually implemented that way, that way would have would have people, and we do have people in today's society, in today's world, that do think they're the holiest of holies and they're um, um, perfect and never commit sin and all of these kind of things, okay. Which the Lord is trying to get you away from to understand that, this isn't something you do by yourself. This is something I'm giving you the power to do. So what do you say? Notice say that I give you the power to get wealth. Okay, you're not, you're not getting wealth by yourself. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 8. Also in Horeb, you provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. Why? And he, he's reminding them. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you. Then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights. I did neither eat bread. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. Okay, so Moses was literally fasting forty days and forty nights. Okay, similar to what Jesus was doing in the wilderness. Okay, fasting forty days and forty nights. Um, book of Matthew, book of Luke, and actually book of Mark as well. Okay, he fasted forty days and forty nights in the wilderness. Eleven. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days or 40 nights, the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, the tablets, the tables of the covenant. 12. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence. So get down quickly. Why? For thy people, okay, the Israelites, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt, have corrupted. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. Let's go back to Exodus and cover this. Okay, you can read about this um, in more detail. Furthermore, okay, let's go literally just read it from. I mean, if you want, go from about chapter twelve in the book of Exodus. You can see how they came out, basically, to the point where they've got the laws, Exodus 20, 21, etc., and they build a, um, a molten calf um, in idolatry. 13. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it are stiff-necked people. Let me alone, so leave me alone, that I may destroy them, and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. So, to the point where the Lord is literally saying to Moses, I'll start again with you. Again, build a nation mightier and greater than this. Okay. So I turned and came down from the mount, and the mount burned with fire. And the two tables of the covenant in my two hands. So it's literally coming down with the two tables of stone. Okay. And I looked and behold, ye had sinned against the Lord your God, had made you a molten calf. Ye had turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord had commanded you. And I took the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. Okay. So Moses literally um, just gets extremely hot with the people. 18 and I fell down before the Lord as at the first 40 days and 40 nights I did neither eat bread nor drink water because of all your sins which he sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger for I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was rough against you to destroy you so he was literally saying look I was afraid what the Lord was going to do to you because of his anger. Okay, but he intercessed for the people. And what does it say? Um, but the Lord, the end of chapter nine, verse nineteen, hearkened unto me at that time also. So Moses literally goes up his way and says to the Lord, "Look, God, don't wipe them out. If you wipe them out, the nations are going to say, well, it's because he couldn't bring them into the new land. Basically, that's why he wiped them out. 
Okay. And the Lord basically pardons Israel's iniquity. 20. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. Okay, why? Because Aaron was literally in control, in command at that time, while Moses was in the mount. And he literally agreed with them and actually made them um, to sin through idolatry. Okay, But he intercessed for Aaron also. And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time as the end of verse 20. Let's keep going, 21. And I took your sin, the calf which he had made, and burnt it with fire, and stamped it round very small, until it was as small as dust. And I cast the dust thereof into the brook that descended out of the mount. And at Tabira, and at Massa, and at Kibroth Hatava, Hatayeva, you provoked the Lord to wrath. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and you believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. You have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and forty nights, as I fell down because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I prayed therefore unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people and thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed through thy greatness, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Excuse me. Look not unto the stubbornness of these people, excuse me, nor to their wickedness, nor to their sin. Okay, so Lord, he, Moses is saying to the Lord, pardon them. Okay. Lest the land whence thou broughtest us out say, because the Lord was not able to bring them into the land which he promised them, and because he hated them, he hath brought them out to slay them in the wilderness. Okay. Yet they, thy people, and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest out by thy mighty power and by thy stretched out arm. Let's keep going. Verse 1 of chapter 10. At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone, so make two new tables of stone, basically, like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount and make thee an ark of wood. And I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark shitting wood and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first and went up into the mount having the two tables in my hand okay and he wrote on the tables who wrote god wrote okay according to the first writing the ten commandments which the lord spake unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly and the lord gave them unto me okay and i turned myself and came down from the mount and put the tables in the ark which I had made, and there they be as the Lord commanded me. And the children of Israel took their journey from Beeroth of the children of Jeachan to Mozera. There Aaron died, we read about that in the book of Numbers, and there he was buried, and Eleazar his son ministered in the priest's office in his stead. Okay, so Eleazar is taken over now in the priesthood. From thence they journeyed unto Godgada, and from Godgada to Jotbath, a land of rivers of waters. At that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. Keep going. Wherefore, Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. Okay. Let's keep going. Verse 10. And I stayed in the mount according to the first time, forty days and forty nights. And the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. The Lord would not destroy thee. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swear unto their fathers to give unto them. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God? to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. So Moses is saying, the Lord only requires these things basically, that's all it takes. Verse 14, Behold, 
the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the Lord's, thy God, the earth with all that therein. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, you above all people as this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God, God of gods, and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. Now Moses is saying he's terrible here. He's not saying it as in a sense of, in a negative. He's saying it in a sense of awe, okay, and wonder. 18. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. So the Lord's just is what Moses is alluding to here, okay, and, and basically stating. 19. Let's wrap up today's text. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. Okay, so that's who you should cleave to. Okay. He thy praise and he thy God that have done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. So these great and wonderful things is, is another way you can say it. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten persons, seventy people. And now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Okay. My God bless his words. So f through that journey, through the iron furnace as... The Lord alluded to Egypt. The Lord has brought less than a hundred into hundreds of thousands, and and potentially um, easily several million. Okay, and the Lord's about to is now possess land for them to um, inhabit or place for His people to inhabit. Okay. So that's the end of today's Bible study video. We've covered Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 9, Deuteronomy chapter 10. I thank you for joining me on today's Bible study video. Subscribe, like, share this with your friends and family and share this with other people as well. So you can see for themselves how the scripture is authentic. How the scripture all lines up with, this, up with other scripture and highlights the authenticity of actually the holy scriptures. Thanks and take care.